Hello and welcome back. In this episode, we're going to be covering some user interface basics. So with Unity 4.6, they unre they released something which most people call the 4.6 UI, um, just because it was released with Unity 4.6. But basically, um, go up into your hierarchy window, right click and then go to UI, and then you can just click on text. to And th that'll create a canvas, an event system, and a text object. Uh, you don't really need to understand the basics of the the event system or anything like that, but um, I'll, I'll show you everything you need to know. So go into your scene view, and you can see we have a text object and our canvas, and we're just going to go ahead and take the text object and make sure it's aligned with top left with the anchoring, and then just drag that up like this. And then we're going to want to resize that, um, I'm going to make mine 400 by, actually I'll just keep it at 30 for now, uh, 400 by 30, and then we're going to put in high score. Uh, let's make that all caps, high score. And then I want that to be bigger, so I'm going to make mine like 70, and you can see, oh no, it disappeared, what's wrong? Well, that's because the height is too small, so if we move that up to about 80, we'll see something at least. And then make the width larger. 600, okay. So now we can see everything. High score with a colon. And then I'm just going to rename that text underscore high score like that. And then I'm going to click on that in the hierarchy and hit control D to duplicate. And then I'm going to call this one score. And I'm going to take score and drag it down and then change the text on that to just say score. So we have the player's current score and then we have their high score. Now if we go back into the game view, um, you can see locked in the top left corner we have those words. Uh, they're kind of hard to read, so let's go ahead and make those both white. Select both text objects, click on color, white, and maybe not all the way white. Let's do like, like a bluish white. How does that look? That looks awful. Uh, let's just let's just play with the colors. Kind of a grayish. Yeah, I like that a little bit better. Um, yeah, I still don't I don't like the font, so I'm gonna go to d a f o n t dot com, defont dot com, and there's like a million fonts you can choose from. Old school, fancy, whatever. Um, personally, I click on this 100% free checkbox, and then resubmit the search, and that guarantees you're not you're not trying to download something that they want you to pay for. Um, be careful though; even after you search 100% free, uh, when you download some of them, if you click download, uh, once you open those up, sometimes they include readmes where the author actually wants you to give them credit for the font, and so make sure you don't get yourself sued by downloading a font that has some sort of restriction in the readme. Um, most of them don't, but just uh, don't get yourself sued. So what I'm going to do is go back to defont.com. I'm going to click on horror, uh, more options, 100% free, submit, and I like zombie, I like dead font walking. Um, I think I'll use this dead font walking one. So I just click on that and then click download. Uh, also, right here is where they have the um, the attribution requirements. So some of them right here they say like must give credit or ten dollar donation required for commercial use or something like that. Um, so just be careful. So click on download, open that up. And then we're going to open up, uh, let's, let's go ahead and create a folder in Unity called Fonts. And then open that up in the Explorer. And go ahead and just drag in dead font walking. Now when we go back to Unity, you can see it's already there. And to apply that, all we have to do is select both text objects and drag this into the font category. And now I'm going to make mine red. Dark red. Yeah, that looks okay. So 
So now we want the score and the high score to, to be displayed up here. So let's go ahead and duplicate both of these objects and go into the scene view so we can drag them over like that. And I'm just going to change both of these to say zero. And we name them uh, text underscore score value and text underscore high score value. Save the scene. And now I'm just going to do a quick git commit. Um, let's see. Season 1, episode 24 ish, commit. Two. I'm not sure if this is from the beginning of this episode. Yeah, I think it must be. Uh, yeah, so we're, we're on episode 24, commit two. We added basic score UI. All right, so ne next thing we want to do is write some code that can actually display the score to the screen. So within scripts, uh, let's create a new folder, and we'll call this user interface. Actually, uh, I'm just going to put it within the character folder, because it, it kind of goes along with this scorekeeper script. So we'll call it scorekeeper UI. Open that up. And we need it to be able to access these two text objects. So the first thing we're going to do is go to create public text. And you can see it's it's not recommending the word text, even though Unity has a built-in text object. And that's because we're not using the Unity UI libraries. So to bring those in, we can just type using Unity engine.ui. And now, now we've imported the libraries, so we can say public text um, score text and public text high score text. All right, so now let's go ahead and put that on an object. Um, we could put it directly on the canvas, or we can create a new object. I'm just going to create an empty object called... Changing, actually, I changed my mind. I'm going to put it directly on this scorekeeper game object. Scorekeeper UI. Oops. Like that. And now you can see we have exposed fields for score text and score, high score text. So we're just going to grab those two objects. Score value goes here. And high score value goes here. So now, now, that, now that we have a reference to them, we can edit them through text. And we should probably do that. Um, there's two things we could do. If if we were doing this for like a mobile platform, if like if we were doing it for a phone, we we wouldn't necessarily want to update the UI every single frame. We we would only want to do it when the score actually changes. Um, but since we're running on a PC, we're not too worried about um, keeping it processor friendly. So we're just going to update every single frame. And to do that, let's go ahead and open up the Scorekeeper script. Um, if you're trying to jump around between scripts, you can hit Control shift t and then SK for Scorekeeper, Enter. And now I have public int score and public int high score. I also have a singleton instance to my Scorekeeper, which we can use to access this class. So uh, that, that makes our life pretty easy. To update the score, we do score text dot text equals... And now we're just trying to assign something to the text field. Um, what we need is the scorekeeper score value. So to get that, we do scorekeeper dot instance dot score. Easy enough. Score text uh, high score text actually dot text equals scorekeeper dot instance dot high score like that. And I think that's all we need to do. Except I broke something. Oh yeah, so um, th this text field is expecting a string value, something like this. Um, what we gave it is a number. And so 
all you need to do to fix that is type dot to string like so dot to string and now that error yep yeah, there is gone okay so now we can hit play and you can see right off the bat it loaded a high score of 3000 the score updates as we kill the enemy we got a thousand point bonus for killing that monster all right so the scorekeeping works I'm going to cut this video off here. Thanks for watching, guys.